All right, geometry, back at it. Three, chapter 3-4, three equations of lines. Two basic equations I'm going to ask you to recall from Algebra 1 last year. We're going to use the slope-intercept form. And we're going to use the point-slope form. Both of them very unique. Uh, both of them can be written to look very similar to each other. Um, but we're going to start with the slope-intercept form. And that's when we were given a slope and a y-intercept. And that form is y equals mx plus b. Okay, y equals mx plus b. Recall that m equals the slope and B is the Y intercept, okay, or where it crosses the Y axis. Slope intercept form, Y equals MX plus B. Then we have point slope form, which is Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Okay, where y1, or excuse me, where x1 and y1 are coordinates, and then the m is still the slope. So let's look at some examples. Let's start with slope intercept form first. And at its basic form, um, they're going to give you an example problem. Let's say they're going to tell you the slope is negative 2 thirds and the y intercept is negative 8. So they're going to ask you to write it in slope intercept form. And so go ahead and hit pause right now and write that in slope intercept form and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so I just substitute the slope in for m. So that's going to be y equals negative 2 thirds x and then I'm adding B, which is a negative 8. And when I add negative 8, that's just subtraction. So my equation is Y equals negative 2 thirds X minus 8. Now, they might use this same one and they might give you two points. And a Y intercept. And so in this case, you're going to have to manually find the slope. So we're going to use slope formula. And so that's going to be y2 minus y1. So 6 minus 8. And then on the bottom, we've got x2 minus x1. That's going to be negative 4 minus 2. So that gives me a slope of negative 2 over negative 6, which reduced negative over negative is a positive. So that's 1 third. So now my equation is going to be y equals 1 third x plus 4. So they might give you the slope, which would be re really simple. And then they might ask you to find it, which is just going to be one more additional step. So it shouldn't be too big of a deal. So now let's look at point slope form. Let's say they give us two points. And they say negative uh, 4, 8, and 6, 2. 
and they say write this in point slope form. Well, we have a point. We can pick either one. We just have to find a slope. So again, I'm going to do 2 minus 8 all over 6 minus a negative 4. So 2 minus 8 is going to be negative 6. 6 minus a negative 4 is going to be 10. And then I go ahead and reduce that. That's going to be negative 3 fifths. So if I'm going to write this in point slope form, I need to remember the point slope form. It's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So all I do is substitute in things that I know. I'm going to let this be my point 1. So two things that never change are the y and the x. They stay y and x the whole time. So I'm going to have y minus my y1, which in this case is 8, equals my slope, which I just found over there to be negative 3 fifths, times x, which stays x, minus my x1. So that's minus a minus 4. So let's clean this up a little bit. I've got y minus 8 equals negative 3 fifths times x plus 4. That is in point slope form. If they wanted you to take this a step out and maybe put it in slope intercept form, then we would just do the distributive property, then add 8 to both sides because we would want y by itself. But right now, that's just point slope form. Well, that's a little over uh, almost about, once I get done talking, about seven and a half minutes. That's chapter three, section four, equations of lines.